Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us again in our ongoing new terrain of the virtual Shakti studio. Before we begin our vinyasa flow practice, today we're going to do 60 minutes, level two, three, lots of core work, some arm balances, inversions. You're very familiar with this format if you practiced with me at noon um, in the studio. So that part's going to be very familiar. We are not playing music when we record these classes just to help with the sound quality, but I will recommend a mix to you and there should be a link actually at the bottom of this video. So before we get started today, again, just find a really comfortable place to sit. I'm sitting on a small meditation block. You can sit on a block, a blanket, a pillow, whatever you have handy. And maybe go ahead and close your eyes. Just get comfortable in your seat. And we're going to start class today with a reading. Uh, this is a poem from a book that a friend recommended to me called 10 Poems to Change Your Life. Uh, there's some really great work in here and some really in-depth kind of analysis. But the poem that I'm going to read to you sort of came to me um, with what is happening and what's going on for all of us right now. You can take this time uh, whether you like it or not, you have to take it, it seems. And you can choose what to do with it. And I think a lot of us are inclined towards introspection. Uh, I think we're inclined towards reflection, to using this time to actually spend with ourselves. Uh, we really don't have the option of our routines and our daily grinds and distractions. And this poem sort of touches on that theme of what happens when you greet yourself again. So the title of the poem is Love After Love. It's by Derek Walcott. And here we go. So maybe just close your eyes, start to breathe in and out of your nose. You can let your hands rest on your thighs or on your knees. And just allow the breath to be natural and easeful at the moment while you listen to these words. The time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life whom you ignored for another who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your image from the mirror. Sit. Feast on your life. And so maybe now keeping the eyes closed, start to deepen the breath in and out of the nose. You're beginning to play with that light constriction at the back of your throat so that your breath has a foggy, audible quality. And whether you choose to play music with this practice or to practice without it, no matter what, that breath is still the main force, the sound in the room. That is what's pulling you out of those trains of thoughts, out of the distraction, and back into your body and into this present moment. Just go ahead and lengthen your left arm up high to the sky. Really extend through your fingertips and then bend at the elbow. Grasp your right temple and just start to draw your neck out in a little bit of a stretch. Try to keep your shoulders sinking away from your ears. And your breath steady in and out of your nose. Just gently pulling, getting a nice length in the side of the neck. And then release, allow your head to float right back to center and then inhale your right arm up, lengthen. Bend at the elbow, find the opposite temple and just start to stretch again. As you're doing this, try to keep the throat open so you're not tucking the chin or collapsing in the throat, but it's nice and open and you're getting a lot of length on the side of the neck. And 
Again, just a little bit more pressure, just a little more lengthening and release. Allow the head to come back to center. Your eyes are sort of gazing down at the floor as you blink them back open. Good, and now we are ready to begin. So if you will, come onto your back and go ahead and bring your knees in towards your chest. <clears throat> and as you're hugging your knees towards your chest, maybe an opportunity here to roll your ankles, wiggle your toes, just wake up the bones of the feet. And then starting to find stillness in the feet, go ahead and lift your head, your neck, your shoulders, and bring your forehead towards your knees. And you're just going to hold this little ball shape, tucking the forehead towards the knees. You can feel how flat your low back is. There's no air underneath your low spine. And keep lifting, keep lifting, and then see if you can actually release your hands from your legs and bring them up overhead. Fan out your fingers and then start to press your palms towards the ceiling. Good, you can look up at the hands. Nice, and on your next inhale, you're going to press your legs out to hover, reach your arms back, and then bring it back in on exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull it in. Good, inhale, get long. Exhale, pull it in. Lengthen, compress. Get another five, four, three, Two more. Last one. And then hold here. Lift the shoulders. Reach for the sky. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. And then release. Your head and neck back down. Maybe you stretch your legs out nice and long on the floor. Big breath in. Out of the mouth. Good. Now go ahead and pull the knees back into the chest. Your hands are behind your thighs. You're going to start to rock up. Balance on your seat, and then rock back, balance on your shoulders. Good, up and back a few times. As you come up and you're balancing on your sitting bones, you're trying to keep those toes from touching down. And as you roll back up to the shoulders, try to keep those heels close to your seat so the legs don't kick overhead. Nice, two more. Good, one more time. And then right into Navasana or boat pose. So go ahead and straighten the legs or keep the shins parallel to the mat. Arms out, spine long. Good, fan out the toes. Breathe here. Nice little lift in the chest. Full expression, one more breath in. Exhale, release the feet, standing forward full, top of the mat, just hang here. Nod the head, yes, shake it, no. Hands can come to the elbows, framing your face as you just hang really, really low in your fold. And maybe lace your hands up at your low back, straighten the arms, and then open the shoulders, folding overhead. Rest the hands, take opposite hand on top, straighten the elbows again, folding in. And then release. On your next inhale, halfway lift. Just a nice, long, straight spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hollow out the low belly. Exhale, fold it out. Inhale, last time, halfway lift. And then hold your lift here. Start to press your thighs back, lengthen your spine forward. Just look straight down. Good, press the hips back, press the thighs back, traction and lengthen the bones. And then reach your arms alongside you for the wall behind you. Palms face down. Just 
start to bend the knees. You can even squeeze the knees together. Hover your belly over your thighs. And then maybe rock the weight forward into your toes so your heels come up. We're going to hold here for five. Four. Three more. Can you lift the heels a tiny bit higher? One more breath in. Exhale, heels down, forward fold. Next breath in, rise all the way up to stand. Arms overhead and hands to your heart. Good, so find your Tadasana, your mountain pose. Root down through the feet, through the pad of the big toe, pinky toe, either side of the heel. Start to inwardly rotate those hips. Drop your tailbone, belly in and up. And then let's begin. Sun salutations. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your right foot all the way back to the end of the mat. Hold your low lunge. Inhale, pick up your left toes. Exhale, pick up the heel, knee the nose, press it back. You can hover the foot through chaturanga or rest it in plank. Upward facing or cobra. Downward facing dog, nice work. First time in downward facing dog in this practice. So bend one knee and then the other. Just walk it out. And then start to find stillness in downward facing. Really let your sitting bones reach up. Even as your heels sink down. Big hands, wide fingers. Look forward, breathe in, maybe crouch back. Empty your breath, and then light as you can. Hop the feet all the way up. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, dive it back down. Inhale, halfway. Palm the mat, step your left foot to the very back. Good, pick up your right toes. Pick up the heel, knee the nose, press it back. Vinyasa or straight to downward facing. Find stillness in your downward facing dog. Then lift the heels, crouch back, breathe in. Empty the breath, lightly come up. Halfway lift and forward fold. Rise to stand, very nice. Last Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive down. Halfway lift, palm the mat. You can step back or you can float to chaturanga if that's in your practice. Open the heart, downward facing dog. Good, now an opportunity to stay here to pedal the feet out if you choose. Mm -hmm. And then start to find stillness in downward facing dog. Really think about softening in the backs of the knees so that your heels can drop. On your next inhale, please glide out to a plank. Pick up your right toes and then knee to the right arm. Good. Step it back. Left side. Step it back right. 
Keep alternating. Left to right, keep the hips nice and low. Try to get the knee high up on the arm. Deep in the breath when it gets challenging. Just two more each side. One more. Downward facing dog. <sighs> Breathe in through the nose and then out of the mouth. Ha. <sighs> On your next inhale, please, right leg floats high to the sky. Bend the knees, stretch the side open. Inhale, lengthen the leg up long and high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale up, knee to nose. Inhale up. Last time, knee to nose. Foot to the hands. Stay on that left hand, right arm reaches high. Good. Maybe the gaze goes up. And we just hold and breathe here. Try to really open that right side. Draw your right hip back. One more big breath in. Exhale the hand down. Try to pick up the toes. Pick up the heel, knee the nose. Press it back. Vinyasa or straight to downward facing. Next, inhale, left leg floats high to the sky, stretch it open. Inhale, left leg long and high, exhale, knee the nose. Inhale, up. Exhale, pull the knee the nose. Inhale, up. Knee the nose, foot to the hands. Right hand stays grounded, left arm rises up. Open that shoulder, draw that left hip back. One more breath in, exhale, left hand down, toes up, knee the nose, press it back, vinyasa or downward facing. Find stillness in Downward Facing Dog. Look to your hands, lift the heels, crouch it back, inhale. Empty the breath. Nice and light, come up. Lengthen and fold. Utkatasana, chair pose on your next breath in. Good. Hold it here. So one thing you're looking for here is to not have a curve in your low back. So you're not dropping into this low spine, but your tailbone comes down. Low back is nice and flat, arms up. Start to sink the hips back. A little more. A little more. Two more. One more, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Palm your mat, step or float to the back. Vinyasa or downward facing. Big 
Big breath in through the nose. Out of the mouth. Ha. On an inhale, please. Right leg floats up. Exhale, knee to the right arm. Good. Inhale high. Knee to the nose. Inhale up. Knee to the left arm. Pause right here. Start to kick your leg open. Find the sole of your left foot. Left arm high to the sky. One more breath in. Exhale to plank, right toes hover. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, foot to the hands. Crescent pose, when you're ready, rise up. Find your breath. Press down into the sole of the right foot. Draw that right hip slightly back. One more breath in. Hands touch and then they meet the mat. Step it back, go or flow. Inhale, please, left leg high, knee to the left arm. Inhale up, knee to nose. Inhale up, knee to the right arm, kick it open, sole of the right foot, right hand high. One more breath in, find your palms, foot stays lifted, inhale up, foot to the hands, crescent pose again, rising up. Press down into the sole of the left foot. Draw that hip back. Very nice. Breathe here. Inhale, look up. Hands touch. Exhale to the mat. Go or flow. Meet you in downward facing dog. One more breath, resting here. Lift your heels, crouch back, inhale, look forward. Empty your breath, nice and light. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Utkatasana, inhale. Hands to the heart as you exhale. Nice, breathe in. And twist to your right. Just look down, notice the way your left knee wants to jump out, draw it back, square them up. Right shoulder opens. Palms move closer to the center of your heart. Drop the hips. Good, drop the hips again. Nice, one more time. Inhale to center, exhale, hands to the heart, lengthen, twist left. Draw that right knee back, left shoulder open, you're just here for a few breaths, drop the hips. 
sink them down. One more time. Stay for a breath in and out. Inhale, Utkatasana. You can do it. Exhale, forward fold, hang here. <sighs> so my house sits about a thousand extra feet in elevation than uh, Shakti Studio. And I think I'm feeling every single inch right now, <laughs> okay? Oh, nod the head, yes, yeah, shake it now. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring those big toes back to touch. Exhale, palm the mat, step or float to the back. We're headed to downward facing. Inhale, please, right leg high to the sky. Knee to the right arm. Inhale up. Knee to nose. Inhale up. Knee to the left arm. Kick it open. Find your fallen triangle. One big time breath in. Exhale to plank. Inhale right leg high. Exhale foot to hands. Crescent pose. One breath in. Warrior two as you breathe it out. So just glance down, you want to be able to see your right big toe. If you can't see it, track your knee a little more to the right. And sink a little deeper. Sink a little bit deeper. Last time, as low as you can get. Palm up, reach forward, inhale, and then reach back. Go or flow to downward facing. Once more, inhale, left leg high to the sky. Knee to the left arm. Inhale up. Knee to nose. Inhale up. Knee to the right arm really high. Kick it open. Fall in triangle. Big breath in. Exhale to plank. Inhale, leg high. Foot to the hands. Crescent pose. Warrior two. Good. Find your alignment. Find your left big toe. Hold here. Begin sinking those hips down. Nice. A little lower. Lower still, full expression. Inhale, reach forward and back. Exhale, go or flow, downward facing dog. Last time visiting chair, look forward, inhale, lift the heels, crouch back, empty the breath, nice and light to the top. Inhale, halfway up, exhale, fold it out. Utkatasana chair pose, as low as you can possibly be. Even lower, even lower. And you're here for five, four. Three, 
two more. One more, inhale. Forward fold, nice job. Inhale, halfway. Palm the mat, go or flow to downward facing. And then drop the knees, drop the seat back, child's pose. If you would like a shoulder opener here, you can bring your palms to touch, bend at the elbows, reverse namaste behind your skull. It should feel good in your shoulders. If it's sharp, if it's tingy, if it does not feel good, don't do it. If you need more, the wider you walk out the elbows, the deeper the stretch. And so you're just observing for a few more breaths, the way that your heart is now beginning to slow again. Your breath is being reined back in. You feel that sense of calm, of ease moving over the body. So just one more breath, resting here in child's pose. <clears throat> and then start to walk your arms out, your hands out, make really big hands. <clears throat> Press the palms down into the mat, draw your shoulders back, find the balls of your feet and lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog, please. Almost done with our vinyasas. We're just going to add a little more to this sequence. On an inhale, please, right leg high. Working the core, knee to the right arm. Inhale up, knee to the nose. Inhale up, knee to that left arm. Kick it open one time, fall in triangle. Exhale to plank hover. Inhale, three point. Exhale, foot to the hands, crescent pose, rise, warrior two, good, inhale, reach back, Siri, stop, oh my gosh, <laughs> exhale, extended side angle, Good, hold here. Um, I apologize, I somehow asked my Amazon assistant a question about primates while I was queuing. I do not know how that happened. The joys of the virtual studio, the home practice, right? So from this extended side, side angle, really get that left arm on a high diagonal. Then maybe you begin to hover your right arm Maybe you match arms and hold here for three. Good, two. Nice, how about one more? Inhale, exhale, warrior two. Nice work, inhale, peaceful. Exhale, go or flow. Meet you in downward facing dog. In, downward facing, big breath in through the nose, out of the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, left leg high, knee to your left arm. Inhale, up, knee to nose. Inhale, up, knee to right arm, kick it open, fall in triangle, breathe in to plank, high to the sky. But to the hands, crescent, 
Warrior two, peaceful warrior, extended side angle. Nice. Holding here, get nice and rooted in your feet. Then maybe you hover that elbow, maybe parallel arms for three, two. One more breath in and out. Take an inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, peaceful. Exhale, go or flow. Tell all the way to downward facing. Last time through the sequence. This time it will be more breath to breath. And we are adding one final piece at the end in the form of half moon pose or Ardha Chandrasana. So if you prefer a block or a stack of books to find your half moon, maybe go ahead and get those ready at the top right corner of your mat. Perfect. And from Downward Facing Dog, we'll begin. Inhale, please, right leg up. Knee to right arm. Inhale, high. Knee to nose, you can do this. Inhale, up. Knee to left arm, kick it open, fall in triangle. Inhale, two plank, three point star. Foot to the hands, warrior one. I'm sorry, crescent lunge, warrior two. Good, peaceful warrior. Extended side angle. Set your gaze, prepare, and when you're ready, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Maybe one hand to your heart. Maybe you play with picking up some of the other digits. Maybe two hands to the heart. Flex through the sole of that left foot. Good. Four, three. You've got two. Then it was just one more breath in. Exhale, hands down, square off the hips. Here's your opportunity to play with handstands if you want, or step it back, go or flow, downward facing dog. No rush. And now we should all be back in downward facing. Big breath in through the nose, out of your mouth. Good news, last side, inhale, left leg up. Knee to left arm. Inhale up, knee to nose, they will and can touch. Inhale up, knee to right arm, kick it open, fall in triangle, breathe in, plank. Three point, foot to hands, crescent pose, warrior two. Peaceful, extended side angle, and then you're ready, half moon, going right on in. Maybe a hand at the heart. Maybe getting lighter in your left hand. Maybe both hands to the heart. Three. Two. 
One more. Release the hands, square off the hips, handstands if you want them, or we will meet in downward facing dog. And finally, child's pose, knees down, hips sink back, forehead rest. Just one more breath here in child's. You're going to stay low to the ground, just walk the hands back. And we're going to find a fire log pose before we move into our arm balances, just to get a little openness in the hips and the legs. So begin maybe with this left shin in the front, flexing through the sole of the foot, you're going to try to stack the right over the left so that the Knees are stacked over the ankles, the shins are stacked over one another. When this posture is new, it often looks like this, it's just due to tightness. That's fine if that's super uncomfortable, you don't have to stack. You can simply place the right shin in front of the left. But if you're able to stack them up, flex through the soles of the feet. Good, your hips and seat are grounded. Maybe get some of that flesh out of the way. Good, sit nice and tall in your spine, press down through the hips, lengthen up. You can remain in your seat, but if you wish to deepen the expression of this posture, maybe you start to walk your hands out and begin folding forward nice and slow. And when you fold it as far as you can, simply allow that breath to soften all the places in your body where you feel the tightness, where you feel the resistance, breathe into those places. And as you exhale, just feel a little loosening, a little softening where there used to be resistance. <sighs> You're doing great. Two more breaths. And then no rush at all. Walk those hands back up. Come up to a seat. You can rest the soles of the feet in front of you and just windshield wipe the knees side to side. That should feel really good in your hips. And then we'll switch sides. So we had the right, we had the left side the first time. So either the right shin is on the bottom and you're stacking the left on top, or the right shin is closest to you and you're stacking the left in front. You choose whatever you need to do here. Good. Remembering to flex the feet to protect your knees. And then press down into the hips. Root into the sitting bones so you can sit really tall in your spine. Hmm. And so remain seated, protecting your knees by engaging your feet or start to lengthen and fold. I like to use the breath as a bellows. So every time I breathe in, I'm kind of coming off away from my legs. 
but lengthening through the spine. Then when I exhale, there's a little more space to fold into. And then when you find that maximum, the deepest part of your fold, you're going to rest and breathe here. Again, breathing in to the places where you feel the congestion and exhaling it out of the body, releasing the tissue. Good, one more breath. Exhale, you're walking it back up. Again, it might feel nice to uncross the legs, plant the feet, just a little windshield wipe of the knees side to side. So now we have a little bit of an openness in the hips. Let's work on getting some length in the backs of the legs. <clears throat> so for now, just allow your left shin, your left leg to relax. And you're going to pick up your right leg, arm under the calf, like you're rocking a baby. Just gentle side to side movement, exploring the range of motion in your hip, always with this foot flexed and engaged to protect your knee. You can work your hand under the Achilles and start to work your shoulder a little more under your leg. If you would like to play with compass pose a little bit, your left hand goes across and over to the other edge of your foot. Your right arm comes as a stabilizer and then you're beginning to straighten the leg to whatever degree you can. And then release. So if you want to play with an arm balance here, center of gravity is really, really important. So I'm going to turn sideways where you can see. Right now, I'm sitting up tall. My weight is a little towards the back of my body. I'm going to shift it forward so that I can actually put it over my arms in just a minute. So hand under the Achilles, start to work this leg almost like a strap or a backpack strap over your shoulder. Plant your hand, the elbows bent so you have a little bit of a shelf and then rock forward, the opposite hand is next to the opposite hip. So now you have your hands down, rock forward, and think about lacing up the ankles and lifting your seat. Don't worry about your feet, but your seat comes up and then maybe your feet. Good. And then release, you're just going to turn your palms to face up, clench and unclench a fist. Give your wrist a little bit of a break. Another variation of that arm balance, I think I have enough room, <laughs> is to start to find the feet and seat up and then chaturanga arms, taking the legs to the other side. Good. Turn your palms up, bend at the elbows, on the floor, on your legs, wherever you wish, clench and unclench. And then hold the fist, just breathe here right into your wrist. <sighs> and release, opposite side. So now your right leg is resting. You're picking this left leg up, rock the baby, gently side to side. Good. 
know, maybe it's easier to try these arm balances at home without an audience. Not have to worry about falling quite as much, worrying about how it looks. Or you have more control, maybe you have a big sheepskin rug you can put <laughs> as your crash pad when you're going up. Good. And then again, we're gonna work on opening, maybe a little compass pose. If you want, just really work the shoulder back, right hand across the top of the foot. The left arm is for stability. And then to whatever degree, you can start to open the leg. Always breathing into it whenever you meet resistance. And release. So again, if you want to play, we're trying to work the shoulder back, shift the weight forward, plant the hands. You can start to hook the ankles if you want. Seat up. Maybe the legs go up. Maybe they go out. And then we rest the wrist. Palms up, clench and unclench. Always doing counter movement for all that weight bearing. And this is for me as much as for anyone else. Big cleansing breath, please, in through the nose. Out of the mouth. Okay, so we've reached that portion of class where we are going to go upside down. All that means, as you know, in an inversion is that your feet or elevated above your heart. So you have lots of options. You can find happy baby. If that's not familiar to you, it's resting on the back. Soles of the feet pointed at the ceiling, knees bent, using your arms or hands on the outer edges. Legs up the wall, very nice inversion. You can actually turn and face the wall and rest your legs if you have a block. You can elevate your hips. Good, and of course, shoulder stand is an option. Oh no, that was a disaster. Shoulder stand is an option, standing on your head, headstand, standing on your hands if you wish, or even a forearm balance. So you choose what you want to do now, how you would like to go upside down. Good, and whatever you've chosen, begin now to come back to the breath. And some of the inversions where you're working from standing on the hands or the forearms or the head, there really is a necess necessary core engagement. So think about tucking the tailbone slightly so you can access those really strong abdominal muscles and you keep those engaged. The breath is still in and out of the nose, very steady, very strong. If you are in shoulder stand right now, see if you can really get the shoulders to be underneath you so that that is where all the weight is being borne and it's not on your neck at all. In fact, you should feel like you could actually slip your fingers beneath the bones of your neck. There's space between the neck bones and the floor. There is not a ton of weight in the skull. Everything's being borne by the shoulders. Also, if you're in shoulder stand, after a few breaths like this, those femur bones, thigh bones, the legs are going to get heavy and start to sink into your hip sockets. So what you can do when you're upside down is to actually cross one ankle over the other and lengthen the leg and then do the opposite side. And from there, allow your legs to get really heavy and you start to fall behind you onto the floor for plow pose. Other inversions, you have about three more breaths. And wherever you are at the bottom of that next exhale, let's all begin to move towards meeting on our mats and on our backs. We're just gonna bring the knees into the chest, hug them towards you. Maybe rock a bit side to side, roll the ankles, wiggle the toes. And 
We don't have a lot of time left. I cannot believe how quickly this hour has flown by. So we just have a couple of shapes here before we move towards Shavasana. So to begin, let's go ahead and step those feet a little wider than hip width, almost as wide as the mat, and then just windshield wipe your knees side to side, loosen up the hips. And then allow the knees to drop over to the left. At this point, you can actually stack the right hip over the left if you want. Arms stretched out in a T, palm facing down. You're gazing over your right shoulder. Maybe allow your eyes to close. And you're just breathing into that twisted space right behind your belly button. Good, one more breath. The bottom of that exhale, your knees come back to center. They go over to the right. Gaze can be over the left shoulder. Again, just breathing right into the center of the body. In and out of the nose. Good, one more breath. And at the bottom of that exhale, your knees are going to come back to center. The soles of your feet will meet. You're going to allow your knees to drop open to either side, Supta Bodhikanasana. Your hands might rest, one at your heart, one at your belly. I prefer to just sort of frame my belly button with my index fingers and thumbs, elbows resting. Your face is towards the sky, the eyes close. You might even take your hands to your inner thighs and just gently rock side to side to encourage them to drop open a little more. And then finding stillness, allow your hands to rest. At this point, you might begin to release any control you still have with that breath. Perhaps you need to open your mouth and allow it to just <sighs> fall away. All of your attention now is going to the belly. You're feeling it rise and fall beneath your hands. As your breath becomes a little more shallow, more automatic, more restful, the sensation of the belly inflating and deflating is going to be lessened just a little bit. Good, very subtle. Just one more breath here in Supta Bodha Konasana. At the bottom of that exhale, you'll take your hands to your outer thighs and begin to close your knees together, hug them towards your chest. Your eyes can remain shut. Any little movements that you need right now on the ankles, the toes, rocking side to side, whatever it is to work out the final little bits of energy. And then you're going to lengthen one leg and then the other, moving your body into its final resting Shavasana shape. Your arms are a bit away from your torso. Palms might be up so you can release your shoulders. Maybe walk your heels out as wide as the mat and let your big toes flop open. If you have any effort left in the breath, please release that and allow your breath to become super shallow, effortless. Just going to notice the heaviness of the bones of your body, the 
especially your skull. You're just sinking into your mat and even into the floor. The backs of your shoulders, elbows, and hands heavily falling into the support under your body. Your seat, the backs of your calves, your heels sinking in. And for a moment, just allowing your attention, your awareness to move away from any of those thoughts that are starting to creep back in and place them instead on the intention that we said at the beginning of this practice. It could even be a running theme for the next few weeks of welcoming back yourself. To really begin the introspective and reflective process of regarding who you are. of getting to know yourself as you would any other friend, any other loved one. Now as your body is beginning to really let go, imagine that beneath you is not a yoga mat. It's not the floor of the room. Instead, you're feeling just beneath your body, right through the fabric of your clothing, soft, round, smooth stones. Little pebbles, thousands of them under your body. The sensation against you is quite nice, like a light massage. You're also going to begin to observe the sensation of water against your skin the coolness, the smoothness, the gentle movement of a light current, as though your body is actually resting on a bed of pebbles in a stream, submerged beneath the water. There's no effort for you here to breathe you feel completely at peace and calm. And you can see above you the sky through the surface of the water. It is a brilliant blue sky on a beautiful sunny day. The temperature of the water is absolutely perfect against you. Cool and crisp and inviting. And as you watch the current flow overhead, anytime a thought starts to move in, you're going to see the bow of a small boat, like a canoe. And you're going to observe the boat as it comes fully into view and then flows with the current away from you. So each thought that moves in becomes a boat in the water and then you watch it sail away. The more relaxed you become, the fewer and further between are the boats until eventually all that remains is you resting on those smooth stones, immersed in cool water completely at peace, without a single obligation or worry.
Allow your body to remain perfectly still with the exception of your breath, which is now being pulled deeper in through your nose, behind your navel, and then you're opening your mouth and letting it go. <sighs> A second fuller breath. Inhale here. A bigger sigh out. Ha. <sighs> And finally, a really full, big breath in. And a big sigh away. Ha! And just start to wiggle your toes and your fingers. Roll your ankles and your wrists. You might begin pointing your feet lengthening your arms along the floor behind you and just taking a nice long stretch on the floor. Big inhale. And as you exhale, just pull it all in. Pull your knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around your shins and rock side to side on your back. When you feel ready, you will roll to one side, the left or the right, you choose. And once you curl up on that side, you can use your arm as a pillow for your head. And then start to use your hands to help yourself all the way up to a seat. Good. And we'll take another breath together. Inhale, lengthen your arms out and then up overhead. As your palms touch, exhale your hands to the center of your heart. Drop your chin forward, bowing, always showing our thankfulness, our gratitude for anything at all. Really let it come to the very forefront of your thoughts, that for which you are thankful in this moment. Perfectly fine to smile while you think about that. And as always, we at Shakti are so eternally grateful to you not just for practicing, which is remarkable and wonderful, but for sharing your practice with us. Thank you for practicing with me today. Thanks for coming into my home. Namaste. Thank you all so much. We miss you. We cannot wait to see you again in person, but until then, this will have to do, and we have so many more classes coming. So have a wonderful rest of your day.